Oh yeah. Boys and girls, we got a H and K unicorn made out of solid unobtainium. Just kidding, it's an MP7. All right, we're gonna be talking about the H&K MP7. This is a very, very unique firearm, and believe it or not, this thing's been around about 15 or 16 years. It was developed in the late 90s to bridge the gap between uh, submachine guns like the MP5 and like a uh, 5.56 caliber patrol rifle. Uh, and really, this type of firearm was intended to kind of compete with the FN P90 uh, as being a, uh, basically a machine gun that can just spit a pack of angry hornets out out of the magazine. It shoots from a 40 round magazine and a 20 round magazine, 4.6 by 30 millimeter caliber. So it's a screaming little 17 devil getting out of there at about 2,400 feet per second. Uh, unfortunately, you're not gonna see a lot of these guns in the US. Uh, H&K has never really been known for playing ball with the US market when it comes to getting some of their iconic uh, designs over to the US in some type of form or another for US civilians to own. They don't really play that market too hard here. So unfortunately, you're probably never gonna see this gun available for sale, but I did wanna talk a little bit about it. It has a three-way selector for full auto, single shot, and safe. It is a rotating bolt with a short stroke gas piston operation. So it's getting away from the blowback that you see in a lot of the other traditional nine millimeter sub guns. And it's getting into a actual locked breech rotating bolt assembly, which makes for a very smooth recoil impulse, a much safer firearm and a much more accurate firearm. Uh, the suppressor that's mounted on this is a Silencer Co. Spec War K. Very uh, effective uh, suppressor, uh, very lightweight. The magazine release is completely ambidextrous and it takes a lot of lines. When you see the H&K USP uh, pistol, the magazine release is a European style, just like on the USP. Uh, you've got a trigger mechanism that you're probably noticing from the VP9, kind of got stolen from this gun a little bit. The bolt stop is located right here and you can reach it from either side of the firearm, okay? Pretty standard fare there. With the H&K MP7, the charging handle is very similar to the MP9 from B&T, kind of like an AR-15 style charging handle, I guess you could say. Uh, the stock collapses, okay? I'm gonna load the gun. I'm not gonna wear any hearing protection because this thing is actually pretty quiet considering, all right? We're gonna take some headshots and uh, just show you how effective this little gun can be. And we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go. All right, we took out all the gopher handlers. That little gopher, he's not getting away. All right, see what we got here. This thing is just so accurate in semi-auto. Of course, we're gonna finish this mag out a little bit. Back there at 75 yards, I'm shooting a group roughly about the size of a Coke can, about maybe three inch group. So at 75 yards, a gun puts them right in there. It's a very accurate little, uh, you know, little machine gun, all right? Uh, I can see where this firearm would serve military and law enforcement very well. And honestly, if H&K is listening, the civilian market would love these too. I doubt they'll ever bring this in as a, as a pistol. One can hope, but let's shoot a little bit more. We are running an aim point micro, very nice little lightweight optic. Let's just have a little fun here. Like I said, guys, just a pack of pissed off hornets coming out of this thing. This is just an awesome little machine gun. So we're gonna get another mag here, take a couple more shots, talk as we go. Pretty cool so far. Okay guys, you know I can't let Eric have all the fun when we do these machine gun videos, but before I get started, I wanna give a quick shout out to Quiet Riot Firearms in McDonough, Georgia. If it weren't for Jake and Chris over there, we wouldn't have our hands on this gun to do a video for you guys. So wanna give a quick thanks to them and especially for Chris for taking time out of his busy day to come out and hang out with us at the range. You know, we know that's, that's hard to do sometimes, but anyways, I'm gonna take some shots with the MP7 here at uh, various targets we've got out here from shootseal.com. We got some uh, sodas up there 
the second magazine, I'm going to strafe those and see if we can't get 40 rounds on the 40 sodas we've got hanging up there. That should look pretty cool. All right, let's uh, see what kind of work we can do with this little devil. We'll run bursts. You know, Eric showed you semi-auto and some full auto capabilities, but I'm going to run some bursts on these plates and see how well this thing handles. Oh yeah. Dude, this is a sweet shooting little gun. It's really a shame, like Eric said, that HK doesn't really bring these in in a semi-auto platform for the civilian market because this is the ideal PDW. You know, PS90 is great, but man, this thing right here just takes the cake. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I used to be in the video games pretty heavy before we got busy with life, but uh, I played Half-Life a lot and Half-Life 2 the MP7 was my absolute favorite gun in that game. You know, just shooting the crap out of the combine, ant lions, head crabs. And uh, what we've got here, we've got 40 sodas. I want to pretend like they're head crabs coming after me. So, let's see if we can't stop those head crabs. I think we show those head crabs who's boss. Let's move on to a couple more uh, interesting things. We've got some body armor to test. See what this little uh, 4.6 by 30 does to some soft body armor. All right, we're going to perform a little body armor test here with the H&K MP7. Uh, we're running some just standard FMJ. We don't have any of that evil black tip stuff. Us lowly civilians can't get that here in the U.S. Uh, very easily. Uh, so we're just going to do kind of a test here to simulate standard soft armor like a civilian or law enforcement officer would wear every day. And uh, this is from the kind of distance where if you turn a corner and there's a guy standing there with an MP7 this close, you're probably screwed anyway, but let's just see what would happen. I'm going to fire a burst and just take the bad guy out or whoever this guy might be and just see what happens to our clear ballistics ballistics shell. It's a 10% FBI block from clear ballistics. Very good stuff. It's what we use for a lot of these types of tests. Let's give her a try. And... Well, <laughs> let's see what happened. I don't think our uh, guy there fared too well. Man, the only second chance this guy's going to have is maybe reincarnation. This guy was completely screwed with that MP7. I mean, it went right through a ballistic still, uh, shot a nice tight group right there. This is level 3A soft armor. It's designed to stop pistol threats. And a lot of our projectiles actually came right out the back of the gel. So it went through a full 16-inch long ballistic gel block, 10% uh, ballistic gel block. And I'm going to feel around. We did have not a lot of those projectiles made it all the way through. So we're going to fish around a little bit. I'm going to pull this uh, guy out of here and see if we can get some of our projectiles after they pass through all of that stuff there. All right, upon closer inspection, we found that the MP7 uh, in 4.6 by 30 did exactly the job that it was intended to do. And that's to reduce collateral damage. So if this would have been a bad guy, the round would have went through the armor. It pulled in sections of Kevlar and, and vest material into the wound, went all the way through and worked their way into the rear panel. But all in all, this target contained the round, therefore reducing collateral damage 100%, which is exactly what those type of cartridges are meant to do. Like your 5.7 by 28, your 4.6 by 30, all of those little bottleneck cartridges you see, they are made for to be fast, close range, and to reduce collateral damage, not shoot through a whole bunch of walls, get through a bunch of drywall. So let's move on to some other stuff. That was an interesting experiment. Well, that ballistic shell footage was pretty impressive. I actually wasn't expecting um, the results that we, we got. We didn't have any black tip ammo, armor piercing ammo, but man, this little 4.6 millimeter round just moving at butt spanking velocities. I mean, just punched through that body armor, punched right through that block, did exactly what it was meant to do. I mean, it's just impressive. The whole platform is impressive. And speaking of collateral damage, I'm going to try to create a little bit more on these sodas that kind of got left hanging up there earlier. You know, it's a little FMJ. It's not really doing a whole lot to those sodas, but we're going to try to take those out. Got another mag, going to run them on our watermelons, and uh, let's see what happens. So, all righty, here we go. Got them spewing a little bit. Has <laughs> little bit holes, making little geysers, little soda geysers. 
Oh yeah. All right, well, the subject came apart pretty good. Let's test out the watermelons. Got a fresh mag in here. Let's see what they look like. That's just punching right through them. Selling right through those watermelons, but I'm curious to see what the backside looks like. Let's go take a look real quick. Well, that was pretty good shooting on Chad's part with the MP7. You know, that damage, it's kind of like the mullet of the firearms world. It's business in the front and party in the rear. It didn't look very impressive from the front, but coming out of the rear, you got some really nasty exit wounds, just showing that that 4.6 by 30 is doing a heck of a job of pushing through these watermelons. We got one more thing planned. Let's have a little bit more fun. All right, you guys know I can't get out of here without causing some type of fiery mischief. We got some small propane bottles, some road flares. Let's have a little fun with the MP7 here. Hey, I hit the gong, you hear that? <laughs> that was fun. Guys, thanks so much for watching our video today on the MP7. This is a very rare and obscure machine gun, something you don't get to see very often. Thank you so much to Quiet Riot Firearms in McDonough, Georgia for making this happen for me. I would not be able to shoot this lovely gun if it were not for their help. Thanks for watching, guys. We're going to do the fire dance, put out some fires. We'll see you next time. Much more on the way. Thanks for watching. <laughs>